Seibugeki 14 happened this past weekend, a weekend that was stacked with massive tournaments around the world. Despite that, Seibugeki 14 was the only tournament this past weekend that was considered to be a major or particularly easy metric for Japan to reach given its smaller size and higher concentration of top players. However, despite that concentration of high players, Seibugeki 14 saw some new names break out into this tournament, causing massive upsets and going on huge streaks to outplace their seeds. You may know a lot about Japanese Smash, but I promise you, you're about to learn a whole lot more. The other tournaments that happened this weekend were Smash Contest Dokome 2023 in Germany and Battle of ZX UMAD in Canada. I plan to cover both of these tournaments in the near future, as well as one more surprise tournament that I won't spoil yet. And yes, I know that I just covered a Japanese major in my last video, but uh, you know, it'd be like that sometimes. Also, if you notice that this video is different from my previous videos, I'm trying something with the format a little, focusing a lot more on the players central to our key theme and a lot less on the players that don't. I'm going to be playing with the format of these videos a little bit, and I hope that's alright. Okay, enough talk. Let's begin. Real quick before we start, I just want to let you know that I'll be live right here on the channel at 2pm CST playing some Smash Bros. Come tune in, I'd love to chill out and talk with y'all. Without further ado, let's get started. We'll be starting off with our 7th place finishers, I'm and Aegis. Aegis is our first player who massively outplaced their seed this past weekend, and goes with our theme of new faces within this top 8, so why don't we start with them, shall we? Aegis is a Terry player, not an Aegis player like you might think, who, according to Smash data, has only gone to 13 other tournaments prior to Seibugeki 14. Although, if I know Japanese Smash, I'd be willing to wager that Aegis probably grinds on Japanese online Smash ladder, like so many of their young prodigies do. Aegis also notably got 4th place at Delta No. 4, the one Japanese major that happened around the time of Kageribi 10 that I didn't cover. Whoops. Aegis, for our purposes today, came into the event as the 31st seed, ending with a total SPR of plus 4. Aegis started off the weekend by making it through pools flawlessly, but coming up against a pretty tough roadblock very early on in bracket. That's because Aegis then had to fight Mia. For most other players, this would be the moment they were sent into losers. But against all odds, Aegis defeated Mia 3-2 in a set that was criminally not streamed simply because I don't think anyone thought this would happen. It's kind of hard for me to overstate the significance of this win. This was Aegis's 4th teenth tournament, to reiterate that to you. Aegis then defeated Noi 3-1 before moving on into winner's quarters, the top 8 qualifier against someone we'll be talking about later, Subaki. In another set that wasn't streamed again, please Japan, you're killing me here, Aegis lost to Tsubaki 3-0, being sent down into losers, where Aegis defeated Rima 3-1 in order to make top 8 losers side. It was here that Aegis went up against Mia again, in what may be their only stream set of the entire tournament. In the end, Aegis lost to Mia in a 3-0, Mia winning the run back. Aegis went on a phenomenal run as the 31st seed, and there, let me say it one more time for the people in the back, 14th ever tournament. Let's move on over to I'm, our other 7th place finisher. I'm, just like Aegis, swept their pool and defeated Uame 3-0, and had a very close game 5 set with Paisidimon in order to make it into winner's quarters, where I'm had to face off against Tekola. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm lost 3-0 against Sokola, dropping down to the losers, where I'm defeated Taike in a 3-1 to move into loser's side top 8, where I'm had to go up against Ken. Unfortunately, I'm would lose to Ken 3-1, being eliminated 7th. 
I'm is in contention right now for the best Sheik in the world, and while you may certainly make arguments towards players like WebJP, Rox, or Sylph, I'm is the one who is constantly making good placements at stacked tournaments like this, and in my mind, that's what matters. Now we get to our 5th place finishers, Ken and Reno. Just like with our 7th place finishers, one of these players you all likely recognize, while the other you all likely don't. Keeping with today's theme, let's start with Reno. Reno is a Byleth main with a secondary Aegis who had gone to only 28 tournaments before attending Seibugeki. While that is more than Aegis, it's not that much more, and still insanely low for this good of a finish. Reno came into the event as the 45th seed, with Reno having the best SPR of the entire top 8, getting an SPR of plus 6 in comparison to Aegis' SPR of plus 4. Unlike the other players that we've covered so far, most of Reno's run was done in winners, and thus Reno has plenty of VODs, thank goodness. Reno started off the weekend by sweeping pools before getting an impressive 3-0 win over Kananabe, a Japanese Fox player who we talked about in this video, my top 8 recap of my Asuma top 11. After defeating Rima 3-1, Reno had to now go up in winner's quarters, the top 8 qualifier against Ken. In spectacular fashion, Reno 3-0'd Ken, an insane win from the 45th seed against the 5th. Reno had made top 8 winner's side, and now went up against Nicola in winner's semifinals. In the end, Reno lost to Akola 3 0, perhaps the best player in Japan, dropping down into losers to face Mia, perhaps the second best player in Japan. And unfortunately for Reno, they would lose to Mia 3-0 for 5th. Reno made the best SPR of the entire tournament, and one of the best upsets against Ken, rivaled only by Aegis' win against Mia. Speaking of Mia, if Mia hadn't been sent down to losers so early, Reno wouldn't have had to face him in losers' quarters. It's interesting to think about how far Reno could have gone had they not perhaps gotten the two worst bracket demons to fight back to back, the first and second best players in Japan. Talk about a rough bracket right there. Now let's move on to our other 5th place finisher, Ken, who we were just talking about. Ken started off the weekend by making it through pools, only dropping one game to Mao on the way out. 
Once out, Ken defeated both Kept and Futoi no Kiwumi A, 3 0, two of Japan's hidden bosses, and in the case of Kept, the best villager player in the world. Ken then went on to lose to Reno, like we just discussed, dropping down into losers. After getting a win on Yaman Taction, 3 1, Ken went up into loser's side top 8, where he defeated I'm, like we've discussed, before going up in loser's quarterfinals against Shuton. <laughs> In the end, Ken lost to Shuton 3 0, being eliminated fifth, placing their seed exactly. Now we move on to our fourth place finisher, Mia. That's right, bet you didn't expect him this far down. I say that, but fourth is nothing to scoff at at any tournament, especially a major, and especially considering that of our top eight finishers, Mia won the most sets, winning 10 sets in total on his run to fourth, his only competition here being first and second place, who both won nine. Mia started off the weekend by sweeping pools, but then lost to Aegis 3-2 like we discussed earlier. After a 2-0 over Suinoko and a 3-0 over Ryuk, Mia then had two very close Game 5s back to back, getting taken to Game 5 by both Motsunabe and Ashimo. This is in stark contrast to Mia's dominant performance at Mayasuma Top 13, which we discussed in this video here. Mia then had one more set, a 3-1 win over Umeki in order to make Top 8. In Top 8, Mia 3-0'd both Aegis in the runback and Rina, with Mia defeating both of our breakout players this past weekend at Seibugeki. And by the way, Mia's sets against Umeki, Aegis, and Rina were all done back to back to back on the main stream before Mia got any breaks. Talk about incredible stamina. It was here in Loser's Semis that Mia went up against Shuton. This set went down to a game 5, a nail biter. <laughs> In the end, Mia lost to shoot on 3 2, a heartbreaker for Mia, but fourth at a major is nothing to feel bad about, especially considering Mia's early upset and subsequent losers run. Now we get to our third place finisher, Subaki. Subaki is the last player we'll be discussing that fits into our theme of breakout performances. But Rister, I hear you saying, Subaki is already a top Japanese player. They're not like Aegis or Reno. And you know what, I admit that you've got a really great point. Tsubaki has made a name for themselves, becoming known for good performances like 4th at Sumobato SP13, 17th at Seibugeki number 12, and most notably of all, 5th at Japan 24, arguably considered Tsubaki's breakout performance, and when a lot of players outside of Japan became aware of Tsubaki's existence. Tsubaki was even the 7th seed coming into the event, meaning that his presence in top 8 wasn't exactly a surprise. However, even though Tsubaki's had good placements before, it's easy to forget that Tsubaki had only gone to 28 tournaments before Seibugeki 14, the exact same number of tourneys as Reno, and that, in the eyes of many overseas viewers at least, Tsubaki hadn't had a breakout showing since their performance at Japan 24, leading many to suspect that Tsubaki may have just been a one-hit wonder to use as content and nothing else. But, dear viewers, Tsubaki had their second breakout this past week in a Seibugeki, making waves that reverberated across the oceans and into the ears of players around the world. Tsubaki started the weekend off by sweeping their pool flawlessly, before then dropping a game in a 3-1 against Marcos in Top 64. This set would be the last time Tsubaki dropped a game before Top 8, however, as Tsubaki defeated Toriguri, the best banjo in Japan and perhaps the world, and Aegis 3-0, like we discussed in Aegis' segment. This put Tsubaki in winner semifinals, where Tsubaki would have to go up against Shuton. This set was one for the books, dear viewers. And with a 3 stock and a clip to close out a nearly 20 minute set, Tsubaki defeated Shuton 3-2, moving into winner's finals against the one, the only, the cuboidal, Akola.
with a JV2 to close it out, Okola defeated Tsubaki in a 3-0, sending Tsubaki down into losers finals, where they would have to fight Shuton once again. Tsubaki would lose to Shuton 3-1, being eliminated at third. After Japan 24, Tsubaki had been waiting for their chance to make a breakout again at a Japanese major, and this was that chance. Tsubaki defeated many of Japan's great players and made sure their name would be heard, and this time won't be forgotten again. Now we move on to our final two, Shuton and Akola. We were just talking about Shuton, so let's go over him first. Shuton started off the weekend as the third seed and swept not only his pool, but the entire bracket leading to top 8, not dropping a single game on his way to winner's semis, all culminating in a 3-0 win over Umeki. It was here, though, that Shuton lost to Tsubaki in winner's semis like we just discussed. From here, Shuton 3-0'd Ken before going on a clutch Game 5 win against Mia and the run back versus Tsubaki 3-1 in order to make Grand Finals lose his side. Moving to the other side of Grands, we have Akola. Akola is the best player in Japan for good reason, showing their continued dominance this past weekend. What am I talking about? Well, Okola's bracket run can only be described as a sweep. Okola dropped zero games on the way to Grand Finals. Not a single one. Not only flawlessly making top 8, but getting through that top 8 flawlessly as well. This was when Okola and Shuton faced each other in Grands. Could Okola keep his streak of a flawless tourney run alive, or would Shuton pull out the clutch factor that had gotten him so far? In the end, Akola defeated Shuton 3-1, winning Sibigeki 14, but not without dropping one game to Shuton in the process. As Thanos once said, all of that for a drop of blood. But then again, are we really surprised? 
Just like the end of our Mayasuma Top 13 video last week, many things in the Japanese Smash scene change. It is the one scene where anyone can be anyone after all, and we saw breakout performances across the board at Sebageki 14, with new players making a name for themselves and past breakouts cementing their spot in Japan's pantheon of big players. But as they say, the more things change, the more they stay the same indeed. Whether it be Mia at Mayasuma or Akola here at Sebageki, some things seem like they won't change, that being the dominance of Japan's biggest names over the country's scene. That's going to be it for today's video. Like I said up top, I was kind of changing around the format, spending the majority of my time on the new players, kind of like what I did during my Wanted 2023 video. Let me know if you liked it. I'm kind of getting tired of doing the same top 8 recap format each video, so I'd love to switch it up from time to time. Either way, this upcoming Thursday, I'll be covering either Battle of Z x UMAD, which I'm just going to call Battle of Z for simplicity's sake, or Smash Contest Dokomi 2023. Also, I may be doing a watch party of high res this weekend, though I can't promise a recap video on it, at least not right away. If you liked today's video, leave a comment down below. Today's question is, of our three breakout performances, those being Aegis, Reno, and Subaki, which was your favorite? Were you particularly impressed by one of them? Let me know down below. Real quick, shout out to my patrons Seth Laster and Fireskull333, as well as my YouTube members Storm Troyper, Loco Soko, and Mattoon. If you'd like to support me using either of these venues, link is in the description. With that out of the way, I've been Rister Mice, and thank you all so much for watching.